Hello, folks. Um, welcome to the very first uh, virtual volunteer fair uh, event uh, with Student Volunteer Connections. Thank you so much for joining. I can see there's a couple of you in the in the room. Uh, we'll just uh, wait a couple more minutes for folks to tune in. Um, but quickly, I want to talk a little bit about how the event will go today. Uh, as you can see, this is a Teams live event. Uh, which means uh, there's a, a, a group of presenters that will share their the information of their volunteer uh, opportunities and their organizations. Uh, and for you, uh, the, the way you engage with us is through the Q&A box. So on your screen, you should see a uh, two sort of text box with a question mark, uh, and that's where you can ask questions uh, to the presenters uh, anytime throughout the event. Uh, today, we have four partners joining us. Uh, we have uh, from Tennessee, Joy, uh, and also the intern from Tennessee, Arvinder, uh, and then we have uh, from start to finish, uh, Jamie. Um, folks, uh, the audience won't see you just yet, so I'll, once I share your screen, they will be able to see your lovely faces. Uh, and then we also have uh, Jenny from CFRU, the radio station on campus, uh, and uh, as well as uh, from Pro Labor Day, uh, Stella, um, and also in the room we have Kirsten, who is one of the peer hoppers with SVC, uh, who will help us uh, monitor the chat throughout the event. And uh, without for further ado, I will uh, invite Joy from uh, 10C to come on and talk about the amazing uh, 10C space as well as the opportunities uh, that uh, it prevent um, provides. Great. There you go, Joy. You're on now. I'm on. Okay, great. Hi. Um, so my name is Joy, and this is Arvinder, who is one of our Canada Summer Jobs uh, employees this summer and fall. So 10C is a um, co-working community hub, social innovation space in downtown Wells. So we provide physical space for people to come and work, but we also provide connections and a community to any change makers in the community. And so that's community members, as well as organizations, uh, not-for-profits, charities, and for-profit uh, companies as well. We have a lot of different types of volunteering opportunities at 10C. I think, are they looking at the theory of change? I'll pop it up right now. Okay. Um, we'll just show you our theory of change. This, is, this sort of captures who 10C is and what we're trying to do. So from very sort of local uh, impact and change and um, sort of encouraging local investment and then moving all the way to having much broader impacts and change on the environment, on social justice, on fair working conditions. Um, so it's sort of one of those, we're an organization that hopes to have a big ripple effect in terms of our impact on the community and then all the way to sort of addressing the sustainable development goals that are um, from the United Nations. So that's sort of, that's 10 in a giant nutshell. But in terms of volunteering opportunities, uh, there are a lot. So 10 relies heavily on volunteers and that's part of our model in terms of making sure that we're connected to the community and relevant. So we have hosts, volunteers that are usually at our front desk when you walk in the door and our hosts are sort of the face of 10C. They're the first people to greet the public, answer the phone, sort of help people find their way around the building or find people that they're looking for. And that's usually around 10 or 12 people that are hosts throughout the week at 10C. So that's one of the main roles. We also have uh, volunteers for helping us, we call it site crew. So that's a lot of stuff in the building helping to make sure the place is clean, help fix things. The building that we're in, we moved into in 2017, finally, and, um, and had a full renovation. So we're still sort of addressing bits and pieces of that. So we're always looking for volunteers that have really hands-on skills, um, carpentry, plumbing, electrical, like you name it, we can put you to work. And then we're also looking for volunteers to help um, just with a lot of sort of organization in the building. So we always have things we need to build or get rid of or rearrange. So, you know, it doesn't have to be skilled, but we need people to kind of help us move things 
things around and lift furniture and that sort of thing. Um, and then we also, our board is volunteer and then board committee. So if you're looking for something that is um, maybe a longer term commitment, because that would be a two or three year commitment for the board and committees. Maybe if you think you've got specialized skills that you can offer, then we're always looking for that as well. And a lot of this information you can find on our website. Like if you want to find out how to, who to reach out to, um, it is all on our website. And, um, you know, so we're always looking for people to, to participate in the organization. And then I think. So now you should be seeing um, Nourish. Yeah. Um, so this is our Nourish website right here. And Nourish is on the fourth floor. So it's um, a lot of um, just kitchen related volunteering opportunities that we have present there. Um, like Joy mentioned, it's just four floors of just like awesome entrepreneurs, scientists, cooks. You just meet a range of people. Um, and so getting to the fourth floor, um, currently we need some volunteers for our Nourish kitchen. Um, so that would entail labeling foods, helping with prepping, um, and even designing new recipes with our. Um, kitchen coordinator, um, which is Kim, who you can see here on our website. She's a pretty cool, cool lady here. Um, and yeah, so basically what Nourish does is it's like kitchen to bring creators together. Um, and we're just trying to help alleviate uh, food insecurity in the city of Guelph. And this is just one of those, those really cool social enterprises that, you know, makes me hopeful for like the future of our community. Um, and in terms of just um, talking about Nourish, there's also a lot of um, virtual volunteering op um, opportunities as well, such as social media, marketing. You can help promote some of these items. You can help write uh, some of the recipes. And yeah, yeah there's a, a lot of different ways you can volunteer here. I started off volunteering here I think like four years ago and I somehow now I'm working here. So right, it's just, I think it's, that's, that's basically what ends up happening. It's just you become an alumni of of uh, 10C, I don't know, this is my way of looking at it. So now I'm working here, um, but yeah, so Nourish is a pretty cool kitchen. One out of seven meals that are packaged are given away um, for local charities, nonprofits, to help alleviate food security. Um, yeah, so here. Yeah, well, and so then this week for Project Serve, we do have um, a virtual volunteer event. I believe it's on Thursday uh, in the afternoon. So we are looking for people to join us online and basically help us with um, sort of creating some content that we can share mostly for our LinkedIn account. And um, yeah, so we're looking for people who can help us sort of go through academic like journal articles that, that are around sort of social entrepreneurship, social innovation, urban agriculture, um, urban agriculture, food security. Is a one. Um, sort of, you know, read through those things, pull out interesting content that that can then be used used to create uh, posts for LinkedIn and for social media. So that is this Thursday. So if you're interested in that, um, let us know. And I think you can sign up for that through uh, Ray, through Project Server. And it's not just, you know, reading and, and writing articles. It's also, you know, finding cool pictures. We'll, we'll set you up in terms of just how to get free stock pictures and attach them to these posts. Um, it's a lot of creative work as well. This is all, all just a lot of creativity involved. So if you're, you know, if you feel like you want to um, learn more and and engage more with the community here in Guelph downtown. Just yeah, come on volunteer. It's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's a bit about us. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, folks. Uh, I just uh, switched myself on here. Uh, thank you, folks. Um, so far, we don't have any questions from the audience. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the next presenter, uh, Jamie, from start to finish. And audience, if you have any questions for uh, ten, related to 10C, please feel free to uh, drop your questions in the Q&A box. And we do have uh, a time allocated, allocated at the end of the event uh, to answer your questions. Uh, and Jamie, I'm just going to put your screen up in a second. And you are live. Hey guys, I'm Jamie from start to finish. I just have a PowerPoint I'm going to pull up here. Perfect. OK, so start to finish is a not for profit Canadian children's charity. We run fitness and literacy programs for kids in uh, marginalized communities all across the country. We're currently in 50 communities nationally and um, all the programming is for kids in grades two to six. 
Uh, and this year we are all online, which is great because it opens the door to um, so many of our possible volunteers since there's no uh, traveling. So previously we did um, our running and reading clubs, which were online or sorry, in person once a week after school for two hours, um, but now they're online twice a week for only 30 minutes. So, so much less time, but we still get everything um, done that we're that we're supposed to get out of it. So, um, it's, yeah, it's 30 minutes each session between 3.30 and 5.30, somewhere in that time block. Um, so it could be 3.30 to 4, 4.15, 4.45, whatever works with your schedule. We're using Google Classroom and um, we're working in teams of two this year. So it would be you and a volunteer partner. Um, and the commitment this year is only mid October to mid December, and then we're also doing a um, spring and yeah, a spring session as well. Um, so just an example of what we do we have. Hopefully you guys can see this as I share my screen. We worked all summer to create these um, fun videos that we can share with all the kids. So uh, in person we used to do um, about 20 minutes of exercise per club, um, but now we've switched it into 10 minutes since the time is shorter in two five minute blocks. You don't have to lead the exercises from your home. Um, we've created these cool videos. And Jamie, if you're uh, hoping to play the video, um, you would need to share that on your screen and then share it, or I can play it for you if that works better. Um, if you can pull it up, that'd be great. If you just click on the, uh, the, the picture, it should link right to it. Yeah. Uh, I have the Literacy Portal Week 20 sample one. Is that what you want to play? Um, the Daily 20 workout. Okay, just give me one sec. Sorry, one second. Sorry, uh, audience, we're just uh, pulling up the um, video for you, so just one sec. Um, right here. There we go. Are you ready for some stretching and cardio workouts? Pull your knees up to your chest and keep your balance. Heel sweep. Keep your back straight, toes up, and sweep the ground. Okay, perfect. So that was um, a sample of one of our workout videos. So you'll just screen share that with the kids. So you don't have to actually facilitate any of the workouts, um, which is very different from what we were doing in person. Um, and then the next video is just a sample of what we've recorded for story time. So I know that you guys probably don't have 100 children's books sitting around at home. Um, so we've taken the time to record these stories for you. And again, you would screen share so the kids would see these videos. If you don't mind pulling that up for me. Yeah, just one second. Uh, 
Okay. Here we go. Hey guys, it's me, Coach Q, and today I've got one of my favorite books to read. This one is called I Love My Hair. You already know. This one's by Natasha Anastasia Tarkin. Every night before I go to bed, Mama combs my hair. I sit between her knees, resting my elbows on her thighs like pillows. Mama's always gentle. She rubs coconut oil along my scalp. But sometimes it still hurts. Perfect. Um, so that was it again, an example of our story time. Um, so you don't have to be reading these books at home to the kids. We've done that for you. Um, so the current volunteer opportunities, we, um, as I talked about, we are doing teams this year. So it would be you and a volunteer partner, whether it's somebody you go to school with that you'd like to work with um, or somebody from the community or possibly another school. Uh, realistically, it could be anyone from Ontario um, since it's all virtual. You would lead a team of eight to ten kids. Uh, from grades two to six. We are trying to um, group them so it'd be grades twos and threes together and fours and fives um, and a few sixes together as well. Um, in your screen sharing program videos, you'll be facilitating group discussions, um, but we've again provided all these questions for you. So um, after the story, we would ask questions about the story. Um, we've taken the time to go through that for you. Um, and the only admin is basically taking in recording attendance, which is great, and communicating weekly with the club director. So again, the time commitment for that is just 30 minutes twice a week, so one hour total um, from just after Thanksgiving to before Christmas. So right around the time exams start, that's when we stop. The second opportunity is virtual coach, uh, club director. So the club director can lead their own team if they'd like with a partner, um, or they can just manage a school. So each team, each school will have two or three teams, um, as opposed to one large running and reading club with about 50 kids like we had before. We now are having 30 kids, so three teams of 10. Um, and you would just communicate with me on a uh, weekly basis and just update me um, if there's anything going on with your volunteers from your location. And our third opportunity is parent liaison. So just connecting biweekly with parents. Um, you could also lead a team if you'd like, or you, your only role could be connecting with parents, just giving them updates um, uh, anything that's happening with the club, following up on uh, maybe some absentees, stuff like that, pretty simple. And the commitment for that is about one hour bi-weekly. Um, with the club director, you're adding probably another 20 minutes to your commitment every week. Uh, so why volunteer with us? Make a difference and give back in your local community during challenging times. COVID has hit kids very, very hard, um, not being in school since March um, really hindered their learning and the um, learning gap is going to be a lot harder to close this year. Um, so you can have fun and do it with just an hour's commitment a week. Uh, also, uh, if you have placement or volunteer hours that you need to complete for school, you're welcome to do that. I'm happy to um, fill out any forms regarding that and gain some work experience. So if you're interested, you can apply on our Time Counts website. Uh, it's just timecounts.org slash start to finish. Fill out the quick application and then I'll get in contact with you likely by email. Um, we do have three virtual training dates set up. Um, I can give you those dates uh, if you're interested. Um, and we do, because you're working with children, require a vulnerable sector check. Um, you have to be 18 plus. We do give you a note um, and often, depending on which city you're in, your home city, you have to uh, file it there. Um, we subsidize a lot of the cost. It just it, it just depends on which municipality you're in. We don't get to make the rules. Um, unfortunately, it's up to the police station that you're um, you're in. Uh, so if you have any questions about anything today, uh, feel free to send me an email. It's just jamie.drohan at start to finish online.org. You can find my email on the website. Um, feel free to um, to follow up with me anytime with any questions. And that is it.
Ray, your mic isn't on. All right, that does happen, folks, <laughs> with Teams Live event. Uh, I was saying thank you so much, Jamie, for uh, for the presentation and the amazing opportunities. Uh, I don't see any questions so far from the audience. Um, the, um, uh, the all the links that was shared by both Joy as well as Jamie will be shared in the announcements uh, in uh, just shortly. So uh, if you uh, didn't see it or take note of that, don't worry, we'll share that with you. Uh, and now we have Jenny from CFRU. Uh, Jamie, just give me one quick sec. I'll send you live. And you're Hi. Ready. All right. Hi, everybody. So my name's Jenny, and I work for CFRU, Guelph's Campus and Community Radio Station and Media Center. So we're physically located at the University of Guelph, and we have a bunch of amazing studios, a massive physical music library, um, and digital music library, and we have a ton of different volunteer opportunities. Um, I'm going to play this video for you so you can sort of see what volunteering during the time of a pandemic looks like. So this is a video specifically designed to show our remote volunteering opportunities. Uh, so yeah, we're celebrating our 40th anniversary this year, which is very exciting and would love to have more people get involved. So let's watch the video and then maybe I can say a few more things after that. CFRU Radio and Media Center offers Guelph a volunteer-driven alternative to mainstream and public radio. For 40 years, we've provided access to the media to groups and individuals who would otherwise have little access through mainstream media outlets. We have state-of-the-art studios and equipment and a huge digital and physical music library, but as a safety precaution during this pandemic, we have closed our station to the public and are operating with the help of remote volunteers. As a volunteer, you can help in our music library. By reviewing and sorting new digital music submissions. You can produce and host a radio show. Producing music shows using audio software such as Audition or Audacity. Or spoken word programs and interview people remotely. You can help us in our programming department. Setting up rebroadcasts of previous shows. You can help us with training. Troubleshooting with volunteers remotely or creating tutorials. Help in our tech department. By helping with our station website. audio or video clips for sharing on our video page and YouTube channel. And we can always use help with station outreach. You can engage with the community, post and share our posts on social media, and spread the word about CFRU.
Get involved today by contacting volunteer at CFRU.ca. Check out our website at CFRU.ca. The music for this video is the song Blue Moon by Man Meets Bear off the album Dream BC. All right, so it's back to me. So I put that video together to show you some of the remote opportunities. Uh, some of the main things that people get involved with at CFRU are producing a radio show. And so uh, that can be a music show on pretty much any genre of your choice. It could be a spoken word program. A lot of people who record podcasts, for example, end up airing that content on CFRU as well. What's super cool is we air in real time on a real radio signal 93.3 FM, and it broadcasts about as far as Kitchener, Waterloo, Rockwood, parts of Alora, and Cambridge. But it also streams online, so people can listen in worldwide in real time from our website. Um, whoever has access to it. And it also archives all the programs and so people can listen after the fact, which is really neat. And then we also receive tons of music submissions. These days we're really pushing towards digital music submissions. So we have volunteers listening to the new content that we receive and deciding uh, what genres it falls into and other classifications like that. And then as you saw in the video, other tech opportunities as well. So we will reopen to the public physically at some point, but the cool thing about radio is it really can happen from a lot of different spaces. And one project that's been unique to the remote volunteering opportunity is a mini interview series that we're launching. So if you're watching this and are thinking about attending some of the Project Serve style events coming up, we have one tomorrow, Tuesday, September 22nd at 2.30. And it's a workshop geared, this one's geared specifically to students. And basically what we're trying to do is record a series of mini interviews that can air at different times throughout our program schedule. So the idea with these would be interviews like maybe five minutes in length. Uh, they could be longer. We always have room for longer content. Um, but yeah, it, you can see sort of in this uh, in this document that Ray has shared, the idea is that you get to choose your guests. So maybe you want to interview your roommate or one of your profs. Uh, maybe you want to interview someone who works at a cafe that you like to hang out at. Uh, maybe you have a different idea about somebody that uh, should have a platform to share their stories and perspectives. And so, yeah, these are things that could be recorded really over any kind of period of time and typically are able to be done with equipment you already have access to. So in this workshop, we're going to talk about uh, what equipment you already have and what you might need to get it started. So yeah, that's basically the the bulk of it. And if you have any questions, you can post them in the Q&A. Um, I'm also reachable at volunteer at CFRU.ca at any point if you want to follow up. Yeah, that's, that's it from me for now. Awesome. Thank you, Jenny. Um, all right. Um, our last uh, presenter today, I think we're having a little bit technical issue with connecting um, her, so we might have to invite her back at a different time. Uh, at this time, again, we don't have any questions so far. Uh, Jenny, if you would like, you can make announcement in the published uh, Q&A space with your information so uh, the audience can see that. Um, and I have a couple questions for you folks um, in terms of volunteering with you. Um, if you were to summarize um, a couple benefits for volunteering with your organization, what would be the biggest benefits uh, for volunteers, specifically for UFG students who would volunteer with you folks? Um, maybe I'll start with uh, with 10C. Um, and you folks, uh, if you want to turn um, unmute yourself, that would be awesome. Hi. Um, so the biggest benefit I think of volunteering with 10C is getting connected to the rest of the Guelph community. I know um, oftentimes when you're a student on campus, your life is sort of centered around the university. So this is a way of finding out what else is going on 
in Guelph and the other sort of experiences that you can have in the community. The other thing with 10C volunteers, with a few of our positions like hosting and some of the site crew and probably some of the kitchen positions, um, when you volunteer with 10C on a longer term basis, then you automatically become a member of 10C. So then you have access to the space and, and to the network um, and to other events that happen here. And then the other thing too, in particular with the kitchen, is that um, you know if you're looking for certain skills in terms of food handling, like those are things that we're interested in providing as well. So if you're looking for sort of hands-on experience in order to develop skills, then that's something we can provide as well. And it's you know things like food handling, but then also with social media and um, you know writing and content and that sort of thing. Um, it's a good place to sort of bring whatever skills you have and then also develop new skills. Best thing though is getting connected to the cool stuff that's happening in the city. Exactly. Yeah. Um, awesome, thank you folks. Uh, maybe I'll pop the same question to uh, Jamie. Jamie, are you okay to answer that? Yep. Yeah. Um, so one of the big benefits of volunteering with us is getting um, hands on experience working with uh, children. So a lot of our volunteers are um, wanting to be teachers, they're wanting to be doctors, they're wanting to be social workers and they're um, wanting to work with children so they can add this to their resume experience saying that they um, have coached and worked with children um, before even finishing school, which is great. Um, I also provide letters of reference um, for med school. Um, anything like that, which um, is great to, to just add extra experience. Awesome, thank you. And there was a question for you, uh, Jamie. I think you just answered it. Uh, just in case there's other folks uh, in the audience who are international students, are they eligible to volunteer even though they're not currently in Canada? If they are attending the U of G, um, they are enrolled at the U of G, then yes, absolutely, they are eligible as long as they meet the um, the timing requirements. So um, I know that there can be time delays being uh, in different countries, but as long as they're available weekly at the same time, then um, that's fine. We would just need the equivalent of a um, police check um, since they are working from children from their country as well. Awesome, thank you. Okay, then now I'm gonna post the same question to Jenny. Yeah, hey. Um, so I guess my answer would be similar, the hands-on experience. Um, I think that a lot of the students that we get who come to CFRU, the big thing is getting to learn these technologies and access the amazing resources like professional studios and huge music libraries while they're going to school for something else. So whether or not you plan to have a future in radio specifically, learning skills like project management, um, public speaking, leadership, uh, and the actual technologies themselves. We have tons and tons of examples of where this has sort of set students apart. So um, getting to share what they're learning maybe in school, but on a platform like the radio uh, and a podcast or something like that is just sort of a, an extra skill set to demonstrate. And because we have all of the training for free, um, then yeah, you can kind of do that at your leisure. It's a very, very flexible commitment in our case. So there is the opportunity to apply for a radio show and have a weekly commitment like that. But there's also tons of opportunities that can happen sort of spread out throughout the semester and when you're available. And um, yeah, similar to Jamie, I've had some really amazing situations where I've gotten to write letters of reference for people who've gone on to do their masters. We've had uh, professional radio people come out of volunteering at CFRU on lots of occasions working for the CBC or NPR in the States. So it's really neat and uh, very flexible. Awesome. Um, that actually sort of uh, these two, my other question is about the flexibility of schedule. I, I know one of the biggest barriers students uh, uh, bring up to volunteering is about um, time constraint. Uh, so thank you, Jenny, for clarifying that there's a lot of flexibility with uh, working with the, the radio uh, and media station. Um, 
And I wonder if that's the same um, um, case for both um, Tensi and Start to Finish. Um, Joy, is that um, in terms of opportunities, I'm putting you live now. Uh, what are some of the flexibility uh, folks would have volunteering with you? Yeah, I think it really depends on what type of volunteering you want to do. So the hosting is really sort of Monday to Friday, nine to five. Um, we're usually looking for a two to three hour commitment. Ooh, that's our doorbell. Um, uh, within the week, um, and sort of looking for the same time every week, but that can also work around people's class schedules and things like that. Um, the kitchen is almost sort of any time, but again, Monday to Friday, nine to five, but we're always looking for people to, to help out with what's going on in the mm -hmm. kitchen. For the kitchen particularly, um, we're looking for students to come in on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, possibly uh, most, uh, possibly like for the afternoon, morning to afternoon time period. Um, yeah, we're always looking for volunteers for um, for the kitchen. There's a lot to do, a lot of cool programming that's happening, a lot of cool people in there um, that you know need the support. And yeah, I think there's always there's always there's always work to be done here. Um, yeah. it's, everything's fluid, everything's dynamic. There's always something changing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And how can they reach us? Uh, people can reach us through our email. So it's just info at tencarden.ca and you can find that, you know, on our website. And uh, yeah, just shoot us an email and then we'll sort of start the conversation. We'd like to try, try to meet people and find out, you know, what they're interested in and then figure out a way forward after that. Awesome. Um, I really appreciate that that piece around uh, reach out uh, and we'll figure something out with you uh, because I think a lot of times students and uh, when they especially if they only log in to like your website or um, a space where they don't connect with you personally, they will think that they automatically don't qualify because of the time constraint. So yeah, folks, uh, if you uh, this any of the uh, opportunity to interest you do reach out to to the different uh, organizations and uh, perhaps there are things that's not posted that um, you can figure out with uh, the organization directly uh, to find a, a placement that works with your schedule. Uh, and then Jamie, if you have anything to add around flexibility, because I know I understand that your program is a little bit more have uh, sort of like set schedule, but in terms of flexibility, how does that look like for you folks? Uh, yeah, so every week we do have a set schedule, but um, so sometime between 3.30 and 5.30 twice a week for just half an hour, um, typically on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, so whatever time within that time frame works for you, we can schedule it. Um, but then if you're not able to volunteer um, on a weekly basis, we also and um, we also do um, special guest appearances. So if you have a cool skill, uh, maybe you teach yoga, um, maybe you teach guitar or you like to sing something like that we do bring on um, guest appearances um, every so often for the kids just to change it up and it gives you a chance to get involved we also do fundraisers um, we're doing a lot of virtual fundraisers this year so if you'd like to help with that if you're looking for marketing experience stuff like that then um, you can get involved that way as well and it's not necessarily um, specifically timed during the week awesome Thank you for uh, for clarifying that. Um, let's see, I think that's all the questions that I had. Is there anything that you folks uh, would like to share further with um, your opportunities or the organizations or the project that's coming up uh, or maybe even just any tips uh, you want to share with the audience? Oh, I see uh, Troy. I have a tip. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, just um, there's a lot of other organizations that look for volunteers as well. So, um, you know, within 10 C, there's Out on the Shelf, which is the LGBTQ library, and they're also the organization responsible for Guelph Pride. And you know, they're always looking for volunteers. Guelph Arts Council is always looking for volunteers. Guelph Black Heritage Society. So. And then a lot of these organizations use um, PIN, which is the People Information Network, um, to sort of advertise their volunteer postings. So if there are other specific things you're looking for, that's a great 
resource. Um, you know, and they just basically have a huge database of volunteer roles and students can, you know, can check that out. So there's also, you know, there's there's a few of us here, but there's a, there's a ton of opportunities, you know, that can be long term or short term or event based. So just encourage people to um, to do that. It's a great way to get involved with the city and to sort of meet other people. That's all. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, um, I also have Jenny who would like to share. I'm just going to send you a lot Jenny. Uh, you're muted right now. There. Is that good? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to share that you don't have to be a student. So I know that this event today is geared to students, but we do have lots of people who work on projects together with other people. So if you are living with folks or in a bubble with folks that um, or have a remote relationship with people um, online and want to produce shows together or interviews together. Uh, we're flexible in that regard as well. And we do provide all the training for free. So uh, typically that's on site, but right now we're doing that through things like Zoom. So uh, you don't have to have any previous experience. Uh, I think sometimes people when they see the radio station assume it attracts people with previous radio skills. If you have those skills, that's amazing. But uh, even if you don't and want to learn about it, that's a flexible thing too. Awesome, thank you. Um, I see there was a question from someone um, asking to want, uh, wanting to volunteer with 10C and what's the best way to con uh, contact them. Joy, um, Kirsten already shared your website and your email. Um, that's the best way to contact them, correct? Uh, contact you, correct? Yeah, that's the best way. If um, if you just want to email us, then we'll sort of figure out what works out best, and then we'll just go from there. Perfect. Um, Jamie, do you have anything else to add from your end? I was just going to say whether it's with us or um, any other organization being working from home, um, having school from home, you're there's typically a lot more flexibility and a lot more time to get involved and it's such an important time to get involved. Um, there's so many organizations looking for help and it's not just great for the organizations, but also great for you um, to get involved and keep yourself busy during these times. So if you're able and have the time, however little it may be, um, a little goes a long way and um, I know every organization is really appreciating all of the help uh, at the moment. Perfect. Um, I think that's all the questions that I have. Uh, we'll just maybe wait a couple more minutes to see if there's more questions from the audience. Um, Folks, we've shared a lot of information with you uh, and there's, you know, a bit of a consistent sort of uh, messaging from all the partners is to reach out and there's, uh, there's always a way to figure out what works best for you because there are tons of opportunities uh, in the in the community. Uh, the, the folks here are uh, three of uh, the organizations that we uh, student volunteer connection with. Uh, connections work with, but we also have over 100 something, uh, 150 something uh, community partners and organizations uh, within Guelph and Wellington uh, County. And if you're not in Guelph, um, there's also tons of other ways to connect with local volunteer uh, centers just like Penn uh, and find those opportunities uh, wherever you are. Um, so yeah, if you really appreciate this uh, this uh, session, make sure you tell your friends. Uh, we do have um, this recorded, so we'll share this with the SVC uh, course link page. Uh, I will ask Kirsten to share quickly um, the uh, course link uh, website, but uh, in order to join uh, SVC course link uh, page, you quick, uh, you simply self register. Uh, with the self registration tab and you can access the, the information on SVC and we have a, a list of all the partners that we work with as well as uh, all of the current opportunity that's available in the community uh, and it also has our information with our um, office hours as well as our email 
uh, so you can reach out to us that way. And throughout this week, uh, Project Serve um, offers uh, many other opportunities, including vo virtual volunteering, as well as other uh, information sessions like this and pinned uh, the local um, Guelph Volunteer Center that we mentioned will be presenting, I believe, on Wednesday. So make sure you check out our uh, event schedule uh, on Experience Guelph, uh, as well as uh, on Griff Life. Uh, if you search Project Serve, you'll see a full schedule of uh, Project Serve. Uh, and then um, as Joy and uh, Jenny mentioned, they're also hosting uh, a couple activities throughout the week. Uh, so make sure you check that out uh, and uh, join us if you uh, are free uh, throughout the week. Uh, if not, connect with us and we'll find other opportunities for you throughout the semester. Um, I, if there's no more questions, I might just end this uh, session for today. All right. Let's see. That's it, folks. Um, again, if you have any other questions, please email us at uh, svc uh, at uoguav.ca uh, and uh, we'll, we'll make sure to connect with you and help you find the right volunteer opportunity, uh, opportunities for you. And again, thank you so much, folks, uh, who's joining us as the presenters. Thank you, Dre, Arvinder, uh, Jenny, and Jamie, as well as Kirsten. Uh, thank you, folks. And that's it for today.